number two. And we're going to hear more about the hill walking. Also, Diana O'Connor from Expose magazine should be in telling us about, uh, well, the fashion bucket list. About 100 things you should do before you... You go off, okay? And uh, also, we'll hear about the census. It's census night on Sunday, uh, April 24th, okay? Uh, some of your comments, uh, there are boardwalks in place at British Bay, from the car park to the beach, and at other beaches around the country. It's only to help it, uh, to make it easier across the beach, but if you fall, does that mean you can sue the council? Uh, another one here uh, that says if she was an ex- such an experienced walker, surely she would know that that walkways get damaged and she should take care and watch for damage to the walkways, says Seamus. I told you there's very, very little sympathy for this woman, but uh, the judge awarded her the money and said that she did not contribute at all in any way to what happened to her. It was all down to the state of the boardwalk which should have been maintained. Let's talk to uh, local deputy Pat Casey. Good morning, Pat. Good morning, Dickon. How are you this oh, morning? Okay, thank you. Uh, as I say, not much sympathy, but uh, the judge took a different view. Yeah, I mean, Judge Lamb's decision on, on Friday has serious and worrying repercussions moving forward if, 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 if it's not addressed, Dickon. You know, and there's a number of sectors like the whole tourism industry in relation to access to the uplands and walking routes. You have all the recreation users of Ireland who use all these upland areas. And then the whole impact this could have on, on, on health and well-being, where we are now looking, trying to deal with obesity, and hill walking has become so popular, and even hill running now has become so popular. And even people from mental health are being promoted to go out on the hills and walk. So if, if this decision is upheld, and I'm delighted to say that it has been appealed, and hopefully the appeal will, will, will go the right direction. I mean, and if it doesn't, it's going to have very, very serious repercussions. I was even at the opening of the Avon Moor Way, just there on Friday morning by Valerie Cox, who, who officially opened it, and that was a combination of community spirit, community uh, national landowners, private landowners, who came together to put a route together from Trooperstown Ward to Rathdrum. And it's there for all recreation users. And, and you know, if, if a piece of infrastructure is put there, to assist us to get over a fence or to a gate that's put there or a piece of ball wall to get it over a piece of bog land. That's there to assist us and make the walk. More yeah, but it should it not be maintained. If this thing was rotting and uh, it wasn't apparent, I mean, I'm just going by what the judge yeah, seemed to yeah. think. If it wasn't apparent that it was rotting and uh, this woman injured herself, is, is that it? it? Just say, oh, well, hard look, uh, these things happen. In fairness, I think it's down to taking personal responsibility for your own activity. And in fairness, she was after walking a 30-kilometre walk. She probably was after walking across the House Mountain, probably went up the, the rocky side of it at, at, at the Crown Wood side, came down the far side, or came around the side, which is a very narrow track, and you're up and down, and next thing you come onto a piece of boardwalk. I've walked that boardwalk several times myself. I've walked in several boardwalks throughout the county. I've taken a spot on a few of them on occasions where I've slipped. We must take personal responsibility. If the National Park is going to have to maintain them to a standard that equals to walking on a footpath in a town or, or, or walking through a, national, a park like St. Stephen's Green or wherever, it'll, the countryside will be shut down. And, and that's the severe worry. Wicklow has a huge positive track record of working with landowners, working with the Wicklow Uplands Council who have worked with landowners and they have made their land available to walkers to access the upland. How are they feeling this morning? That if they continue to leave their land accessible to the public, they are now threatened with claims of somebody who okay, calls no. them. Uh, I was talking to Pat Dunn, uh, chairman of the IFA Hill Farming Committee before the news, and he said he's not going to do anything. He's a, fil- a farmer in Glen Malure, and he's got the zigzag walk on his land. He's not going to change anyway on this, but he's fearful for the consequences. But aren't we talking about two different things? If you if you fall over a rock or slip on the grass or whatever it is, well, that's the natural environment. This thing was put there by uh, the people looking after that area. It was an artificial man-made piece of infrastructure that wasn't maintained and isn't this woman entitled to sue because it wasn't maintained and as a result of that it seems according to the judge she um, injured herself yeah, 
Okay, and on a, on a very accurate point of law, the, the woman is probably right. But we have to move beyond the point of law and the spirit of law. The National Park are putting primarily a lot of these boardwalks in for the protect, protection and conservation of the environment. And, and I think Glendalough was one of the areas that first got the boardwalk put when it was along the Spink Walk, which was being eroded completely because of the walkers on it, and a boardwalk was put in. And I'd say there's people slipping on that boardwalk on a weekly basis up on the Spink and throughout the county, and they're not claiming because it was put there to assist them to get across a wet piece of bog land and equally to protect the, the, the bog. And, and they, those people are using the spirit of the law. They're not going in claim after claim after National Park because a piece of the boardwalk is rotten. We're talking about land in extreme severe weather conditions at high altitudes. It's almost impossible to have all of these boardwalks throughout the county and nationally up to a standard that will equal a pedestrian walkway in a town or a city, Declan. And I think if, if, if necessary, the Occupiers Liability Act should be changed to take account of what's happened now last Friday. And, and thankfully, even though the doll, the government hasn't been formed, the doll is still sitting, and I hope to get an opportunity on Wednesday afternoon in the, in the doll under insurance statements to raise this issue and to see what we can do, because we can't afford to have the countryside shut down, Declan. And this is where, if this continues to go, that's where it's gone. Okay. Deputy Pat Casey of Fianna Falls. Thanks very much indeed, Pat. Good morning to Thank you. Thank you, Declan. Thank you. That's uh, Pat Casey there. And I don't know what your view is, but as I say, uh, a lot a lot of people get in touch and they aren't happy at all. And they agree with the sentiments expressed there, Pat Casey. They might agree with Pat now and everything generally, but uh, they do certainly agree on this, that this uh, woman should not have had the award. But as I say, the judge listened to the case and uh, 40,000 was awarded to her. Now, Deanna O'Connor is here.